Broadcasting from Hollywood, it's the official On Air with Brandon J podcast. Here we go. Hi guys, what's up? It's Brandon. Um, welcome to On Air with Brandon J. I'm joined by a special group of people. You may know them as the cast of Sangre Negra Black Blood. Guys, introduce yourselves. Danny, how are you, man? Hey, thanks for having us. I'm Danny Arroyo, and I play Christian Santos on Sangre Negra, Black Blood. And I am Antonio McKay, and I play Ricky Santos on Sangre Negra, Black Blood. And I'm Gabrielle Tewitt, and I play Rebecca Santos. So we have the Santos. So are, are you guys like <laughs> brothers and sisters here on the show? Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. So, yes and so, no. so what I want to do, I want to talk about how you creative individuals created the idea of this series that's that's debuting on November 22nd. So, Antonio, like, how did you guys come up with the idea? Well, basically, I I always I always wanted to see Latinos and and blacks and everybody different different ethnicities shown in non-traditional ways. So I remember when I was a kid, I always loved Dynasty. So I wanted to create a, like a Dynasty type of show with some crime elements and stuff like that to make it more, you know, gritty. And that's basically how it, and I just wanted to cast Latinos and, and Europeans and, you know, everybody in, in one mix and see what would happen. And that's basically what we came up with. And this is sort of a dynasty meets Sopranos meets um, Miami Empire. Vice. <laughs> meets Empire. Yeah. It's Empire, well, yeah. that's Los Angeles it, it, as a whole in general, right? It's like the melting pot. You know, when I think right. of Los Angeles, every ethnicity, every culture, that's what makes that city so unique. So it's interesting to see you have all of these different flavors, as I would like to put it, exactly. in this and show. It's based, it's and, based and, in Los Angeles. It makes it yeah, special. and the drama and, and the excitement. And so let's talk about how did you guys cast for these specific roles in the series? Okay, I'm going to let Danny take that first because he has the most interesting story. To me. <laughs> um, I, I got cast through... Um, uh, there was, uh, I guess, a mutual friend that Tony uh, had and, and some of the producers had. And this mutual friend who is no longer with us had recommended me. And I was in the Dominican Republic actually visiting my folks when I get a call from Tony, who I've never met before. And we just chatted up and, you know, a five minute conversation turned into like an hour conversation. We were like, oh, this is going to happen. And once I came back, I started participating in uh, helping them cast other actors by you know reading with them helping them to audition and it just kind of became this thing here and uh, it's, it's been a great relationship ever since so i'm grateful for that one friend that you know believed in me and, and, and set up some things sometimes you know referrals they go a long way yep absolutely it's all about networking i think we were talking about this before we started this interview gentlemen and uh, and gabrielle we all are connected due to a unique form of networking. So it's always mm -hmm. interesting to see how these various films and, and television series get casted because, you know, of course, the, the screenwriters, they, they want specific uh, characters that en enable, per se, I would like to say, in terms of like the characteristics, like let's say, you know, Ricky Santos, you have these specific characteristics and we're looking for this individual. Correct, exactly. And they usually go with people who they've known or, you know, it, they cast just like how we cast, you know. People think it's, the audition process is a big illusion, believe me. But that's another story I'm not gonna talk about. I'll share my story. It's, it's mm -hmm. very uh, interesting. I worked with uh, Tony and Frank, the director, uh, on a previous project. And uh, they contacted me one day and they said, hey, we wrote this role with really you in mind, uh, an attorney, but you know, still very beautiful and sexy sexy but strong and powerful and smart and you know you don't see a lot of women cast that way and I was like wow amazing they said we think you're just the perfect woman to to pull this off and we we wrote it with, really with you in mind 
And uh, I felt so, you know, so honored and, and it was really, really, really fun for me to, to take on the role and work with them again. That's very cool. And what's it like, everyone, working alongside Eric Estrada and Eric Roberts, the two Eric's? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's I mean, funny. I mean upon, upon first meeting them, you never know what to expect, but you just base it off of, you know, your childhood or things that you've seen them perform. You're going, are they like these characters? Or, and then they they totally disarm you once you meet them and they give you a hug, you know, seeing them. Hey, good to meet you. I'm Eric. It's like, I know you're Eric, you know, <laughs> and um, they're just friendly. They're funny. A lot of laughing on set uh, pictures. And all of a sudden they're like, this is like everybody else. And yeah. we wind up having a great time with our scenes with them. Uh, and that's always really nice to see that the people you looked up to are actually very nice and and, and um, like they're human, like like the rest of us. Yeah, like it's like Danny said, one of the biggest surprises was the sense of humor that both of them have. And uh, that was pleasant to see that, you know, you got to keep you laughing. If you keep us laughing, we're happy. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, Gabrielle, you were you were touching on the fact that you got casted for this this role that really empowers the embodiment of women that are actually more than just a pretty face that actually have intelligence and things of that nature. Uh, what advice would you have to those women out there that are pursuing as actresses trying to avoid being that typical typecast? Hmm. Yeah, um, great question. Thank you for that. Uh, I I really believe that, you know, so much of life is really developing who you are, you know, and it's not just the way that you look. And so, you know, because of that personal belief, you know, I'm, I grew up in front of the camera since I was 13 years old and started my career very, very young, <laughs> way, way, way ahead of my time before I even had a concept of, you know, what road I was, I was going down. I was scouted at a very early age. And um, it was really just my, you know, my sense of self, you know, that really, you know, I've always kept really in touch with and developed and I think that, you know, pretty women, a lot of times, uh, they tend to really rely on the way that they look. And I think it's really instrumental, you know, to develop, you know, who you are, you know, as a person and as a soul. And I feel like that, you know, is part of my foundation that gives me that strength and understanding of who I really am. Um, because it's it's not based on your looks and that's just a shell. Uh, you know, it's really about, you know, connecting, you know, with yourself. Um, so I, I definitely feel like there's so many beautiful women, you know, out there and uh, it's so important, you know, to really, you know, empower yourself and, and to learn and to expand, you know, in, in, in different ways and develop yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think you're ready for a TED Talk now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of those is coming in the future, definitely, there for sure. And I just want to say, yeah, I worked with Eric Roberts on a, a film years ago, and uh, gosh, he's just such a hardworking guy. And, um, you know, I, I think the industry has given him, you know, some bad raps at moments, but uh, it was a real pleasure working with him. And Eric Estrada, gosh, what an amazing guy, just such a beautiful energy and heart of gold and, and so funny. You know? <laughs> I think um, the first time I met him, we were doing a photo shoot and he was on set with his wife, you know, you know, that he plays his wife in the show. And I, I walk in and I walk by and, and he says, oh, he goes, oh, my divorce just walked in. <laughs> He's just so, so witty and so funny, but, but just so sweet. Yeah, just such a sweetheart. That, that, that's that's cool i mean you know and and that's the thing like you hear these names and you never know are they difficult to work with like one of my friends uh, and she said the exact same thing so the story is not changing very yeah, someone that's that's very easy to work with being you know eric roberts uh eric estrada being super cool super relatable super laid back all those things so let's talk about one of the things that is not talked about in the media for the most part and that's mm -hmm. self-funding, right? So oh. from my <laughs> understanding, everyone here on this on this interview, this show is self-funded. Like how difficult is it to self-fund something of sub such uh, substance and quality? Wait, 
extremely. <laughs> Let me underline that extremely difficult. It's the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. I'll tell you the truth. Gathering up people and one of our major investors is on is on this um this call right now. Um, Gabrielle was very instrumental in helping us, her and her partner. Um, so we appreciate that greatly, as well as about three or four or five different entities that put together what basically came out to be almost almost three million dollars to do wow. these all eight episodes. So we basically basically did that. No GoFundMe, nothing else. We just basically five thousand here, ten thousand here, twenty thousand here. 40,000 here, one big one for 75,000. And basically it was stuff like that. I put in some money and, you know, different other people. And we all basically sacrificed. Um, actors took less, um, crew took less. Um, or or didn't get paid at all because we believed in the project. Believe in the project. I so mean, that, that's also contributing. Yeah. But, so, but you know, it's interesting. And you say that, Danny, mm -hmm. and, and, and I have to add to that. You know, that's what it takes sometimes. I mean, look at The Bay, the Emmy Award winning uh, television series. Multi, um, multi Emmy Award winning. Multi, Bay. multi yeah. exactly. It, and the thing mm -hmm. is, they had to do the exact same thing. So if that's what it takes to to create such quality and, and to create a long lasting product, then that's mm -hmm. what it is. I mean, I, I know, you know, well, starting up my own startup and, and bootstrapping everything, and it's so difficult to fundraise from an entrepreneurial perspective. However, once you build that traction and that momentum, they're gonna be banging down your door saying, why didn't we do this You know, years ago? Exactly, oh, yeah. and that's what we're finding is happening. Now that it's getting closer to launch, people are starting to pay more attention and um, hopefully season two will get financed quicker. There you go. I mean, and, and, and check this out. Everybody watching this episode, we are less than a week away from Thanksgiving. And these wonderful folks have been so gracious and kind to share the trailer. So we're going to check out the trailer of Sangre Negra Black Blood. And then we're going to come back with the cast. You're in the mix right here on air with Brandon J. I still don't understand how you would pick a guy like that over me, though. He's a made man. I'm not a made man. Ricky is not who you think he is. Ricky only cares about Ricky. Always has, always will. What you got? I like that, man. I like this organization. I want to be part of it. This is not all the time. While running the streets, Ricky was heading up the juvie gang Los Diablitos. The little devils. His mom was black. The old man was Latino. You know what? Hey, 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 let's stop it. Let's stop it. Stop it. I'm not kids anymore. I thought he only had two sons. The lawyer and the cop. I'm actually out here trying to find my brother Silky. I haven't seen Silky in a while. My brother was at a party that you were at a few days ago. So I'm gonna have to call you a liar. What you see up here is a roadmap to organized crime in Southern California. Genzo Sabatini. It seems like every crime committed in the West Coast leads back to this guy. When the time comes, it will be me taking down my uncle. Sangre Negra means black blood in Spanish. Who do we know that might fit that description? And now that you know that he is, you must destroy him. Meet my partner and benefactor, Miss Christina Sabatini. You think Sabatini's on to us? Only one way to find out. I'm wrong, 
Lolo you held Sabatini. You just got hit. By the Sangre Negra gang. Sangre Negra. Sangre Negra. Sangre Negra. Black blood. Black blood. Black blood. I like that. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed the trailer. I, you know, everybody here that that's taken the opportunity, Danny, Antonio, Gabriella, uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing it with us. I think this this project has so much potential and it has real substance. And I love the storyline. Oh, let me let me say is that um, it's very easy to want to be a part of this production. You know, based on what we talked about earlier, how it's hard to get the money. Some of us never got paid, but we believe in the project. And that's a testament to Tony's writing. Tony wrote some really great characters and he knows how to enrich them. You know, as Gabriella had talked about earlier, how it was a great role for her. My character was a great role for me. And, and Tony also makes it easy because he listens to us and says, well, what else do you think your character would do? Or where would they go? Or, or what, what? And he allows us then to embody further this character that's why you, you see such very rich characters in these eight episodes and how they have a great arc and progression and where they start and where they end and there's a lot of substance there so you know credit to tony for doing that because i've read a lot of scripts and i went yeah i don't want to be a part of that i don't see what's there but immediately upon reading the script i knew and talking to tony yes i want to be a part of this and that's you, awesome man. so it's airing november 22nd <laughs> on amazon correct yes sir and um, run through again. I play Ricky Santos. Basically, I'm the teenage bastard son. Well, I shouldn't. I'm not a teenager, but Eric Estrada was a teenager when he had me, and I was a bastard and juvenile delinquent. He adopted me into his very rich, glamorous family, and uh, we'll go from there. Danny sure. is. Yeah. So yeah. So um, Tony is the gangster lovable bad guy of the series i am the uh police detective captain as he calls me the captain america guy who's always trying to do you know the right thing and we're related by blood i, I have he's half he's my half brother and then we have a third brother who is a defense attorney so as i'm trying to arrest tony uh tony's character then we, then he tony hires our defense attorney brother to defend him so we got that three-way that is battle genius going on. Now it's like, that's oh, you're, you're defending him. You know, you're yeah, yeah. So, so brother, my brother's not defending brother him. Defending him, right? Yeah. And then Tony has a child, who uh, the mother of his child is not my fiance. So there's that dynamic going on. Um, yeah, total, total, very soap opery, L.A. everyday lifestyle for us. And I'm, 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 I'm the former wife of of the other brother. Of the defense attorney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she's also an attorney who helps me out through other means. It's very complicated, but once you see it, it'll be very easy to understand. So. And it, it, it does make a lot of sense. We yeah. Real quick, because Tony is mentioning Amazon. What uh, What are the other um, networks that we are going to be premiering on on the 22nd? Apple TV, Roku, uh, probably Popstar. I have to look over the contract one more time. And... Um, so there's about four others that I can't quite pin down. Tubi also is going, it's coming back on Tubi, but it's basically going to be Amazon first and foremost. Very cool. Well, Gabriella, thank you so much for, for taking the time to thank be you. on this interview. We are yeah. grateful to have you here. Happy holidays and uh, I great job with this series. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say one thing, um, you know, we really appreciate you having us here and we really appreciate the support of everybody because this really has been a lot of love and passion that has gone into it from everybody. And I just want to say, I didn't put money in until after I was already on the show and cast, but I believe oh, in yeah, it right. so much. I believed in it so much and wanted to see it go forward. And the people, again, just have the most incredible hearts that, you know, worked on this show. So yeah, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, and Antonio, it, you know, I, yeah. I've been on the phone with you on numerous conference calls and we're finally mm -hmm. putting a face to the voice. And uh, right. thank you for sharing me because I was privy to see these episodes. You shared them with me before they air. And I'm yeah. like, wow, this thing has such great quality 
and such a great storyline. And that's what I always enjoy in Mario. I mean, Dick Wolf, a, a genius when it comes to storylines. Yep. And that's why exactly. these long lasting series have been on the, the air for, for God knows longer than I've been alive. <laughs> right, right. And that's one of the, those are some of the people that I'm trying to follow. Hopefully we can be like him. <laughs> hey, hey, there's yeah, there's always off. room for another it's long order of Chicago yeah. BD. Yeah, Chicago they're, they're. <laughs> Very cool. Sangre Negra, Las Vegas. There you go. There you so, go. There you go. I'm I'm and when you call me and uh and it's time for for me to audition, I'm I'm definitely gonna audition for the one in Vegas. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> I'll be there to audition Vegas. Danny, any, any uh, closing thoughts for our audience before we let you guys go? I think that the audience is going to have a great time watching Sangre Negra, Black Blood, on all these terrific platforms. Um, you can find it anywhere. I said Tubi is free to watch. If you have Apple TV, what a great platform to see it on. Uh, you said Roku, which is now becoming a really big, big entity. Pop star, possibly. Wonderful uh itunes of course so watch it reach out to us on instagram you'll find all of us there you see our names it's very easy to find and we are very giving uh cast and crew that we'd love to interact with our with our audience and our fans so reach out to us and we'll let you know what's going on and we see you at events come up to us we'll take pictures with you uh we're very excited about this it's, it's been long overdue but we are here and it's happening so i'm getting negative yeah. black blood november 22nd very cool. Danny Arroyo, Antonio McKay, Gabriella Tuit. Thank you so much for being special guests today. And uh, no, remember, guys, November 22nd, this series is airing. And this episode of On Air with Brenda J is going to air on Roku, iHeart, Apple, everywhere you could put, put possibly listen to a podcast. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank okay, you. Great. Thank you so oh, much. And one more thing. One more thing, Brandon. So if you want any more information on the series, go to Sangre Negra, the series.com. Oh, it. super easy. Sangre yeah. Negra, the series.com. Thank you so right. much, everybody. I'm Brandon. We'll see you next time here on air with Brandon J. Goodbye for now. Thank you for tuning in to On Air with Brandon J. Follow on Instagram at I am Brandon J.